Once our restriction digest is over, we want to try and find our DNA fingerprint. So we're going to take our samples out of the water bath after 10 minutes. And we're going to load our samples onto something called an agarose gel. This is going to allow us to be able to see the DNA that's been cut in each of these tubes, except for the uncut DNA, of course. We're going to set our micropipette to two microliters, and we're going to add something called loading dye. What the loading dye does is it mixes with the DNA, and it's very dense. And so when we add it to our agarose gel or the buffer above the gel, the DNA will then fall to the bottom. So let's go ahead and add our loading dye. And if you remember, I said we're doing two microliters, which is actually a really small amount. So we're going to put the loading dye all the way to the bottom of the tube to make sure that it mixes with our restriction digest. And to make sure that we switch our tips because we don't want to mix up our sample's DNA. We finish adding our loading dye to each sample, and now we're ready to load our DNA onto the agarose gel. We're going to add our samples to the agarose gel that's here in the electrophoresis system. You'll see it looks a bit like jello sitting in there. You're going to use your micropipette to add 15 microliters for each sample. You can make sure you switch your tips in between each sample so we don't want to mix up the DNA. As we continue loading our samples onto the agarose gel, I want to share a bit about this electrophoresis system. We will be running electrical current through the gel, and you may be able to see a positive sign near the bottom of the system. That's important because DNA has an overall net negative charge, and it's going to move towards the positive end of the box. Remember this when you're looking at your results. We'll now run electrical current through our agarose gel for about 10 minutes. 